Hallelujah. Thank you for joy unspeakable, full of glory. Oh, if we can experience even, oh Father, a tiny taste, oh God, of what is yet to come. Father God, you are leading us on from glory to glory, from revelation to revelation, light to light, grace to grace. Father, we thank you for this privilege, this honor, God, that we can come into your house. We can receive a word that will change our lives. And so, Father, we humble ourselves under your mighty hand. I ask, speak through my voice, think through my mind. Let that which comes forth be that which comes from the very throne of heaven. Let it bring a blessing to the lives of your people. We thank you for it. In Jesus' name, somebody said amen. amen. All right, we got a ways to go. I'm going to do my best. Normally I have, uh, I'll just tell you, normally I have maybe a, a page of, you know, uh, things that I, I want to kind of hit. Uh, sometimes we get it in all, sometimes we don't. But even today, as I was finalizing what I had to do, I had to add one more page. And I want to say this, you know, it goes from revelation to revelation. And, and I hope that what we are sharing here is making a difference in your life. Anybody can testify to that. And so, uh, and so um, I always ask for it, but today I really need extra grace. Someone say great grace. Amen. Say, Pastor, receive great grace. And so we will do our best to give you what the Holy Ghost wants us to give you, and I hope you receive it and you hang in there because um, I want to come back to what we've been talking about. Again, I didn't know the depth to how far we'll go, but this thing is just blowing up in my spirit and and I will even say, and I don't know if I will get there, and I hope I do, but there is, a, a, there is something, there's a scripture that, that had been, had been eluding me for, I would say for years, you know, and um, it's in Romans 8, you know, that there was a connection of a scripture that I wasn't necessarily getting. By the grace of God, uh, God is beginning to open my eyes to begin to see some things. How many of you know that you can read a scripture for years, and then the, suddenly the light will come on? And that is what God is doing in my own life. Because one of the things that humbly I can tell you is this. One of the words that God gave me that launched me into what he wanted me to do was in Matthew, I believe, 13, where he says that unto you has been given to know the secrets of the kingdom of God. And so I believe, especially... When I go into that closet and I just go Zambaran Dede Kosu. How many of you know what I'm doing? I'm talking to my papa. Hallelujah. And then the Holy Ghost begins to release some things. And so I pray that today you you will you will really press in and get something because this word by the grace of God has to change your life. The devil has stolen from us too long. The devil has tried to hinder us for far too long. But today, God is about to unlock someone's destiny. Because we are going back to the book of destiny. We are going into the courtroom of heaven to unlock books, unlock destinies. Some of us think that you have located your destiny. I came to tell you there is more to you than you are living right now. And the devil is using every means necessary. He will use wicked means. He will use demons. He will use lies. But can I also tell you somebody that sometimes he will use legal injunctions against you. And so what he is declaring in the court of heaven may not necessarily be a lie. Are you listening to me? Yes. When he lies about you, you can rebuke him and let him go. But sometimes he will find something, whether in your life or in your past, and use it so it is, it is a fact. And based on that fact, based on that legal fact, he can present it before the court of heaven and say, Father, I know you love Alfred so much. I know you want to do all these things for him, but for one, two, three reasons, you can do it legally. That is why you need to present your case also before the same throne and realize that you got some witnesses that will witness on your behalf and you have the greatest advocate, the greatest lawyer. Hallelujah. Your senior 
your brother I'm about to shout up who will also speak on your behalf and say father uh-huh yes what he is saying she did it up he did it up it was said of him but father do you remember that on the cross up I spread my hands wide up I was hung wide high up the blood began to flow and I declared it is finished therefore you can't hold that against him anymore you got to release his destiny you got to release but you see sometimes even though you are free you don't know it you don't have a revelation of it and you are walking around not knowing that there is a delay there is a denial and somebody may say oh i know delays are not denials i believe that but sometimes delays will end up becoming the denial why because you can die and never fulfill what god intended for you to fulfill is somebody here with me so god is about to take us somewhere oh i saw in my spirit sometimes as i'm praying i feel like man even myself i got to go higher come on somebody you got to pray for me i got to tap into some fasting i got to tap into some realms come on somebody say realms and people will begin to walk out of here and your life is about to take on another level of meaning and fulfillment not because you change your job show me something I'm about, I hope I have to, not because you see see your joy is not in your job <laughs> you can keep doing what you are doing for the rest of your life and be the most fulfilled person on earth you suddenly you begin to realize oh you don't have to be jealous about anybody else I love there's a man of God called Charles Caps. He was a farmer, but he discovered this work of faith and he discovered these things. He was a farmer who ended up owning his own plane. And so he will farm during the week. On the weekends, he will get on his private jet and go preach around the nations and come back and farm. There is so Somebody said there is something. And, and so if you don't hear anything, I'm about to tell you, the devil doesn't care necessarily about what you are doing. Be all the lawyer you want to be. Be all the doctor. Be everything. But there's something he is fighting from you to manifest. And you can be the richest man. You'll see them and still be miserable. Even as a Christian and still feel unfulfilled because he has hidden your destiny from you. By legal means. Oh, uh, Are you ready to go there with me? Alright, so let's start from where we have started from. Go with me, Daniel, quickly. Let's, let's, let's pull back and then we'll get, you know, today, like God, we started from the end and then we are going to begin. So you know where we are going. Daniel chapter 7, quickly. Let's, let's, let's set the scene up. Let's set the scene of our experience in the courts of heaven. Oh, please, uh, go with me to Daniel 7, I believe 9 and 10. Um, I, I've told you before, read that whole chapter of Daniel 7. So today we are talking about courts of heaven. Open books part two, and the books we want to refer to specifically is going to be the book of destinies. Amen. Hallelujah. So let's read Daniel 7, 9 and 10. Are you there? All right. 9 and 10. He says, as I looked, Daniel is in the spirit. He's had a dream, and he's in this dream, and he's seeing what is taking place in the courts of heaven. As I looked, thrones were placed. And the ancient of days took his seat. His clothing was white as snow, and the hair of his head like poor, pure wool. His throne was fiery flames. Its wheels were burning fire. A stream of fire issued and came out from before him. A thousand thousand served him, and ten thousand times ten thousand stood before him. The court sat in judgment. Kaba. And the books were opened. Did you see that? So anytime you step into even a, a courtroom setting on earth, there is thrones, the seats that the judges, if, if it's an appellate court, they have more than one judge. Are you understanding me? Again, your American system here is, 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 is a replica. There's nothing new under the earth. Amen. All right. There are only a few courts in terms of civil cases and stuff that you have only one judge. In, in most cases, they have a panel of judges. True. Even the Supreme Court. And so there are thrones. I mean, you go to that place. I have not been there physically, but you've seen the thing. You know, it's like they are sitting on thrones, right? And then the judges come. And then they say, all rise. And then the judges are seated. Then they say the court is in session. 
Let's open their books. Today, we call their books briefs. Right? They have briefs. Lawyers, plaintiffs, defendants. There are, there are precedents. Amen? Other court cases that they have to refer to. So, judge, according to uh, this v this, this is what was decided. Therefore, it is a precedent that has to apply to this. They, began to, they begin to talk uh, 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 lawyer jargons. And some of us are sitting there like, you, know, you don't understand what they are saying. And a miscomma can get somebody charged or set free by technicality. Oh, the devil is a liar. I pray that the devil will not get you by technicality. <laughs> Watch what you are saying. All right? So, and, and the books were open. Now, without going there, I already told you in the New Testament, so that out of the mouth of two or three witnesses, a matter is established. This is Old Testament, but this same scene is played out in Revelations, I believe, 21. I gave you the scripture where the Bible says, again, that was, uh, they were in heaven, and in the judgment, in that uh, uh, time there coming soon, and the books again were opened, and he referred in that context, the books, there was one book actually referred to, it was called the book of what? Life. And so I already described to you that everything about your Christian life is, is in the legal setting. The Bible you are reading is not, a, it's not just, a, uh, it's more than a historical book. It is more than a, philo a philosophical book. It is more than a financial book. You can get all those things. But ultimately, that book or that Bible you read is a legal document. That is why it is called the Testament. Are you listening to me? And so you need to be able to go in there and find your briefs and find your arguments and find, uh, hallelujah, your precedents. And that is why in prayer, sometimes you can go to the court of heaven and say, Father, you did this for Abraham. Therefore, it is a precedent. And you said you are not a what? A respecter of persons. See, some of you think that God did it for Abraham because he was a perfect guy. Was Abraham perfect? Not in a million times, no. Hey, God. Uh, somebody who offer his wife and say, hey. <laughs> for the preservation of my own self, don't tell them I'm married to you. You are my sister. Uh, in actual fact, it was a half-truth. But it was, half-truth is still a lie, right? And yet, when the king tried to touch that woman, God, oh, one day, that's, I wish we'd get there. That's vengeance and the recompense. God came and said, you are but a dead man. Do you know whose property you are about to touch? This is a prophet. The king said, hey! Abraham, why? <laughs> you see, see it, 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 God superseded the thing. He said, I know he lied. But he's still my servant. I will deal with him. Satan, you can't touch him. Folks, even in your sin, it is none of the devil's business. God will deal with you. The devil has no place. Ah, that's why I said, if you sin, go to him. Run to him. For he will forgive you. If you confess your sins, he is faithful and and why? He is the judge. Oh Lord, I hope I can get there and show some people. See, this is the freedom you and I have. Hallelujah, somebody. Uh, so he said, you are but a dead man. Give that man's wife back to him. I come to tell somebody, the devil has to give back your property. The devil has to give it back. Ah, whether it was your mistake, whether it was your fault, that, ah, uh, the, 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 whatever is the Abimelech is trying to get it up. You are a prophet. Come on, tell somebody and say, I'm a prophet. The Bible says, touch not my anointed ones and do my prophets. He was talking about the whole nation. Do them no harm. Touch not. And the king came back to Abraham and said, Abraham, pray for me. And then he warned his people, anybody who will go next to this woman, you will have to deal with me. Because of Abraham, do you know the Bible says God shut the womb of all the women in that town. Hey! You don't, somebody said, you don't know who I am. So, so that is a precedent. You can go to God and say, God, even though Hannah's womb was shut, she prayed, you heard, open, precedent. See, everything you can see in the Bible that God did for somebody, it is legal. You can take it as a precedent and go say, according to, I also qualify. 
not because of my goodness, but because of your goodness. Can somebody say amen? amen. So, so there, there are books. Someone say books. Now, the last time we discussed that we at least, at least, I, I, I showed you at least four books. I'm not saying that's the only books. Maybe somebody can discover more. But we have the book of life. Someone say book of life. I'm not going to go there. And then we have the book of judgments where one day every act, everything that you have done, Bible says you are going to be judged accordingly. Uh, listen to me. The book of life, your name being in the book of life is what qualifies you to go to heaven. But the, what is in the book of judgments, come on, it's okay, come on, come on, he's fine. Hallelujah. What is in the book of judgments is what you are going to receive rewards for. Are you paying attention? The reward you get for just being saved is heaven. But folks, that shouldn't be enough for you. So somebody say, oh, I got my salvation. I know, you go to heaven. But there is life after heaven. And there are rewards. And don't think that your reward is going to be equal to somebody else's reward. As for that one, the God is a respecter. <laughs> but he's just, he's just, he's going to go by the book. And no, everybody will leave and say, okay, master, I see it. It is, you are fair. You are right. So Paul said, I have fought a good fight. I have run my race. Now I wait a crown. There's a crown of glory. There's a crown of righteousness. There are different. You know, the beautiful thing is that at the end of it all, when we meet him face to face, we are going to cast all that crown before him. Can somebody say amen? So there's a, uh, there's a book of life. There's a book of judgments. And then there's a book of remembrance. According to Malachi 4, Bible says that some people who talked well about God in the midst of a culture that was against God, but they were a remnant that stood firm. And Bible says a book of remembrance was opened on their behalf. People of God, that is important. Another time we can talk more about it. But that is the kind of book that you are going through something that you can tap into and say, God, remember me. But people of God, in the time we have, I want to talk to you about the fourth book. I call it the book of destinies. Psalm 139, let's look at it. So the book of destinies is what we are talking about that every one last of us, before you were clot in your mother's womb, there was a book written about you. About who you were, what you were going to do. Folks, turn to someone and say, I am not a mistake. See, that is why you can't allow anyone to judge you by the color of your skin. And they are trying to get you to that. You are more than your skin. Ah, you are more than your gender. And there's a reason why you are who you are. That is why he said, ah, you are fearfully and wonderfully made. Someone say, I am, you know, somebody said this way, that you, you are fearfully, I'm wonderfully made. We are all fearfully and wonderfully made. God created you out of his reverence. You are looking for the scripture 16 to 18. Let's just do that. So, 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 so your, your, your destiny was written in a book. Can, can, can somebody say, I came with a book? There is a book about your life. Just like there is a book that comes with every car. There's a manual. It, it, it details everything you need to know about that car to, to maximize its potential. And some of us, we, because we don't read that manual, we are abusing that car. <laughs> See, you hear the word abuse, you think, oh no. Abuse only means abnormal use. So anything you abnormally use, that means you don't use it for the purpose it was created for, you are abusing it. So when you abuse a child, you don't know the purpose of a child. So you are abnormally using it. You abuse a wife or a husband. Do you know there is also husband abuse? <laughs> and can I tell you this? There is also pastor abuse. <laughs> Some people don't understand the purpose of a pastor. So they abuse that pastor. Not you. Say somebody say, no, not me. <laughs> no, abnormal use. That's it. That's it. You abuse drugs. There is a purpose for that drug. You abuse it. You don't use it right. So some of us, we are self-abuse. Because you don't know your destiny. You don't know your purpose. 
you abuse yourself. Not that you are cutting yourself or anything. Anytime you are not using yourself to the potential God has created you to do, you are abusing yourself. Oh, Lord, am I talking to anybody at all? Someone say, I'm about to get into the potential God created me to be. See, but you can't reach that potential if you don't know what is written in your book. What did he detail? And so even Jesus, in Hebrews chapter 10, I believe, Bible says when he came, he said, sacrifice, hallelujah, you have not prepared for me, but as it is written of me, according to the volume of the book, I come. Jesus tapped into what was written about him, what he was about to do on earth. That is why for 30 years he did nothing but accomplish everything that God wanted him to do in three and a half years. He didn't waste time. He knew exactly what he was supposed to do. At 12 years, he tried to step into it. The parents said, hey son, what you doing? You should be around the other 12 year olds being mischievous and playing around. He said, ah ah, I read in my book. Don't, didn't you know I was supposed to be about my father's business some of us live to 90 years old and don't even know what is written in that book jesus said i know what was written about me that's why he said i didn't come to waste time i only do what i see my father has already told me to do i say what my father has told me to say i don't waste time people try to praise him bible says he knew what was in the heart of man so he didn't even commit himself to any people see when you know who you are you will know how to surround yourself with the right kind of people you will not just get up hallelujah trying to get approval from just anywhere and anyhow you are serious about your business you know exactly what God has written about you. People will say, let's go do this and that. You say, uh uh, maybe that is for you, but as for me, I got to be in the house of the Lord. I got to do and be about my father's business. But what is the father's business for you? It is written in your book. Somebody say, it is written in your book. And so, Psalm 139, David has tapped into that realm. Hallelujah. He says, your eyes saw my unformed substance. Hallelujah. Oh, I frack up. I pray somebody will live here encouraged. You are not a mistake. You are not a happenstance. Are you listening to me? God knows you by name. Like Jeremiah, he said before, you were a clot in your mother's womb. I knew you. I had formulated you have. I had concocted you up. I know what I had said about you up. You may not know it up, but I know it up. That is why again Jeremiah says to you up, I God, I know the thoughts up. Hallelujah. The plans up that I have towards you up. You may not know it, but I know it up. I have written it down up because what is a thought up will become words. Are you listening to me up? That is the logos becoming rim up. When God knows something up. He doesn't just know it in his mind. Up. He also writes it in a book. Up. Are you listening to me? He said, I knew you. Up. Oh, I know the thoughts I have concerning you. Up. They are thoughts of good. Up. You may not be experiencing good right now, up, but the thoughts I have written about you, up, they are for good up, to give you a hope up, and an expected end. Up. You may look around you up, and you say, there is nothing hopeful around me. Up. I don't even know what my expectation is, up, but don't let that fool you. Up. Don't let your experience uh, define you. Uh, for there is something higher uh, than what you are going through now. Uh, there is a man up there uh, who has already determined uh, the end uh, from the beginning. Uh, and if you will only repent. Ah! if you only change up and reset your mind up and come back to the manufacturer and come back to the God who formulated you up and say father I have wasted so much time I know I did this and that but can you tell me what thoughts you had no matter where you are he will turn it around he will still fix you up he doesn't plan as you go along can I talk to somebody God already knows where you are supposed to end up you may not be there but you can come back there he can shift things and get you where you need to be can somebody shout yes that is where fulfillment is 
I know the thoughts. I know the plans I have towards you. I created you, Chris, and I know exactly why I gave you, hallelujah, this sport and this thing. Because everything I do, I do for purpose. I am not a wasteful God. Every temperament I gave you, it was for a purpose. The way you look is for a purpose. The way you walk is for a purpose. But you got to tap into that purpose. Yeah, and when you tap into that purpose, I am already ahead of myself. But that's okay. Hallelujah. That is why he can say all things. All things. All things. But it's that if you repent and you reset your mind and you say, God, can you still do something? Can anything good still come out of this 50 year old who has wasted all his life? 60 year old. And God said, Don't worry. All things will work together for your good. For my plans are good. My thoughts are good. And everything will work together. If you will stay on the plan, I can do in 10 years what you couldn't do in 50 years. If you will reset your mind and come and talk to me about what I wrote about you in the volume of the book, you can still achieve great success in 10 years that you have done in all your years. Am I talking to anybody who is ready to arise and get back to where God has determined for you? All things will work together for good for those who are called. I will show you that scripture soon. For those who are called according to his purpose. According to what is written. According to what has been revealed. According to what is in the book. But you got to have revelation of that book. So David said, your eyes saw my unformed substance in your book. Did you notice this in your books? In your book. Jamie, your book is different from mine. Or let me put it this way. The book may look the same. It may have the same cover. But what is written in there? The content of the book is different. Stop reading my book. Jesus. Take your own test. Come on, you've been there. <laughs> well, for me, I was so smart, they had to look. No, I'm teasing. <laughs> no, I'm teasing. But you get what I'm saying? Stop trying to look at somebody's book. Before you go, I'll show you somebody. We're going to use somebody as a live test. But I'm going in and out, so just flow. The Holy Ghost is flowing. Peter tried to copy somebody's book. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jesus was trying to get him back on his line. After that, uh, Peter says, how about this guy? I'll show you this guy, John 21. How about this guy who is following us? Jesus said, mind your own business. Mind, okay, can I change it? Mind your own book. Tell me someone, say, mind your own book. Mind your own business. Peter said, Peter said, okay, Jesus, no. But how about this guy? I mean, this guy. Jesus said, hey, stay here. Right here. Stay here. Focus. Stay here. What if I want him to live forever? Is that your concern? Stay on course. Some of us, we got to get our eyes of somebody else's book. How God is dealing with them. And get back on the treadmill of your own life. And get your shape. Get yourself into shape. And fulfill the call of God upon your life. God is not going to judge you based on somebody else's book. God is not going to judge you on based on what he said about somebody else. You can fulfill somebody else's purpose. You can do a whole lot of good. And to miss your purpose. Are you listening to me? That is why Jesus at the end of the age, he will look at people and say, thou good and faithful. Good ain't enough. Oh, I just, I just said something. I think this is a tweet. Good ain't enough. You gotta be good 
and faithful faithfulness comes when you do exactly what i tell you to do you can do a whole lot of good and still not be faithful because mother linda you can come and be so good and i can tell you mother linda oh this sanctuary needs some cleaning up and you say yes sir hallelujah but the moment i leave you walk into the bathroom and the bathroom is all messy up uh, people have just messed up that place up and you look at the bathroom up and you look at the sanctuary and you say you know what i think pastor missed it up the bathroom needs more help up the bathroom needs more cleaning up and so you're gonna shine up spend all your time up shining the bathroom up hallelujah and then when i walk in up you come up smiling up and i have a frown on my face up because i see some things have been done up in the sanctuary and then you say oh but pastor don't worry about the sanctuary come and look at what i did up in the bathroom up i might go to the bathroom up i can spread my burritos up on the floor and eat from the floor up it is shining it is good up i might say hey, daughter oh man you did a good job but you were not faithful for what i told you to do for all you know i already told stella to take care of the bathroom you began to do her work what i had written about her you did something good but you were not faithful i came to talk to somebody good ain't good enough it's time to get faithful it's time to find out what god said about you what god told you to do don't try to read my book get to reading your book up and just stick with your book up and fulfill your book up at the end up god is gonna look at all of us up and say thou good and faithful seven am i talking to anybody Oh, I know somebody's about to shift up. I know somebody say, Oh man, I've wasted all this time. Well, if you know that, get back to your book. Look at somebody say, Get back to your book. I don't know why I'm talking. Get back to your book. It doesn't matter how much time you've wasted, Patrice. Get back to your book. Because he says, in your book, they were all written. Ah, am I talking to anybody here today? He says, let's keep going. Because I got a couple of scriptures to go. They were all written. Every one of them. Look at this. The days that were formed for me. So then God can also tell you. Because he had already formed the days and what you were going to do in those days, he can also tell you, Derek, the number of your days I shall fulfill. If you stay with me. He said, when as yet there was none of them. Can you finish it? How precious to me are your thoughts, O oh God. How vast is the sum of them. If I would count them, they are more and the sun. I awake. It's time for somebody to awake to your book and I'm still with you. That is why I love that song, Abba. Said, your thoughts define me. Whose thoughts define you? Who have you been talking to? That was the problem in the beginning. God had written their book, Adam and Eve, and they decided to talk to somebody and exchanged someone's thoughts for theirs you better be careful who is talking to you and whose thoughts is defining you let our bad thoughts define you but his thoughts are also written in a book somebody said amen so so what is that i told you that two weeks ago i dealt real quick with more i've, I've realized that what i dealt with then was the destiny of 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 a, of a corporate setting and then God began to prophesy even there was a man of God here with a company. I told you every company has a destiny. Nations have destinies. Cities have destinies. Churches have destinies. So there's a corporate destiny that you belong to. Are you listening to me? And that's why in the book of Revelation, Bible says uh, to John the Revelator, uh, the angel came to me and said, I want you to eat the scroll 
It will be sweet in your mouth, but bitter in your belly. After you finish eating it, now I want you to prophesy about nations, about peoples. That means that what God told him to eat was the destinies that was written in the book of nations. That is why I believe with all my heart that the spirit of prophecy is very key. And the spirit of prophecy allows that prophet to tap into a portion of the thoughts and what is in your book and then can release it to you. That is why your Bible says, reject not prophecy because the spirit of prophecy is the testimony of Jesus oh, aye, aye, aye. oh that is why today by the grace of God I'm more energized by the grace of God this church oasis is not just an apostolic church this is a prophetic church we want to activate people into the prophetic into dreams and visions are you listening to me because listen to me some of you god may speak to you about me and will give you a little bit of what is in my book and when you begin to prophesy it, what you decree is what is going to happen so Dan, uh, uh, was it Daniel? so john began to prophesy according to the book for the nations and based on what he prophesied god began to manifest today i pray that god will manifest what is in your book rakib but the question is this real quick what is the ultimate destiny for all of us folks this has humbled me and sobered me when you look at this it says before any one of them were formed i had already written it down that is foreknowledge that means god already knew who you were supposed to be before you started foreknowledge and then the foreknowledge becomes destination or predestination someone say predestination go with me now to the book of romans let's check something out there oh lord are you still with me look at romans chapter 8 hallelujah and uh, those of you back there I'm going to start from verse 18. Romans 8 is amazing. This is, this is one of the most powerful. Romans 8 is your liberty chapter. That's where it tells you you have been adopted. And out of that adoption, there's a spirit that makes you cry, Abba, Father. You are now sons. But starting from verse 18, it says this. And I want you to follow. I may not be able to do everything I want to do with this scripture. But it has opened my eyes to something new. It says, for I consider that the sufferings of this present time. Anybody suffering? Everything is working. All right. For this present time are not worth comparing with the glory that is to be revealed to us. Can I just tell you, this glory is not just the glory that is by and by. Uh, you can experience glory before you get into glory. Oh, Lord. But I got to go. Keep going with me. Fast. If I tell you to uh, pause, then you pause for me. Now look at this. For the creation, someone say the creation, waits with eager longing for the revealing, the manifestation of the sons of God. All the hurricanes that are happening, all the stuff that is going on, is happening because of you. Because you are the ones that are called to come and calm the earth down. You are not. Oh, we'll go into some things, man. But 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 listen to me. Someone say I'm a son of God. Yeah, months ago, I, I preached a sermon about the, the sons of God. This son of God is not just being a child of God. This is not technon, which is the child of God. This is not the same uh, word that is used in John chapter number 1 and 12. That says that those that believed on him, he gave them the power to become sons or children of God. Okay, so you get saved, you are a child of God. But there is a higher level of sonship or of growth that gets you from technon to what we call uyos. And Uyos is the same as what was referred to as Jesus. That means that someone who in every way resembles his father. In all aspects of his attributes. That was the problem Jesus had when he ventured and told the Jews, I am the son of God. What did they say? Hey, you, a human being, are making yourself equal to God. 
how can a son be equal? Because in their terminology, they understood what he was saying. I am not just talking about being a technon. I'm talking about being an wheels, a matured son of God that thinks like the father, that talks like the father, that acts like the father. Therefore, can represent the father in every situation. A son has the power of attorney to represent everything the father has. Oh, come on. Somebody talk to me. The church has to grow up to become sons. Yeah, you are a child. Are you a son yet? Ask somebody, are you a son yet? I'm going with this. So he says, the whole creation is waiting on you to grow up. The whole creation is waiting for some Jesus minded people that when there's a hurricane they can stand in the boat like Jesus, the original son and say, peace be still. And they will say, yes sir. For you have your dominion and authority. Sons don't cower when there's a trouble. Sons step out of their boat and walk on water if they got to walk on water. Oh, we're going to go some places. Are you listening to me? So their creation, someone said their creation. Oh, you understand this? You are not going to be afraid of the spider jersey in your room. I just had to, I just had to. Because you will realize I got dominion over creeps. Oh, I'm about to manifest. You are more than you think you are. But, but, but go, go look at this. For the creation was subjected to futility, not willingly, but because of him who subjected it in hope. Keep going with me. That the creation itself will be set free. Freedom. America can be set free not by political forces, not by media forces, but by the ecclesia who understand who they are. You will speak in the streets and say, Today we declare no killing in this place. We are we will, listen, before this thing wraps up, we're going to see some things. There is a remnant about to take the book that is in heaven. The devil has been fighting from you, from manifesting, but you are about to rise up and you are going to take authority and declare. Folks, rapture is not an escape hatch. We are not in a hurry to be raptured because it's getting bad. No, no, no. In fact, in fact the revelation I have about rapture, this is me. Is that when the rapture is about to happen, I might even tell Jesus, Jesus, can you give me five more minutes? <laughs> Devil, okay. Yeah, yeah. We are out of here. We are not escaping. We are not running away. Yeah. We are not scared. Yeah. In fact, the rapture happens after we have taken full dominion for the kingdoms of this world have become the kingdoms of our father and of his son and of the church. And we're going to say, Father, we're ready to get out of here. People are looking at me like, oh, oh, pastor, the Antichrist. What about the Antichrist? You have the Christ. Why are you afraid of the Antichrist? Close, should I close? I'm doing. Are you listening to me? You got the Christ in you. You got the original, the undisputed, undefeated, heavyweight champion of the world he is living on the inside of you that the greater one is on the inside of you the greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world christ in me the hope of glory people of god i am not living to go to glory i am living to manifest glory and one day the glory i manifest will consume me and then oh like Enoch I was and I was not somebody got to get some but listen he said the creation someone said the creation oh the earth is waiting on you Rocky the earth is waiting on you when you step to that place that's where you will see resources start coming to you 
Because the same God has said, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness. The fullness includes money. The fullness includes gold. For the silver and the gold belong to me. The cattle upon a thousand fields belong to me. But people of God, when you say it belongs to him, you are being religious. Didn't the Bible say that you are an heir of God? Didn't the Bible say that you are joint heir with Christ? So stop sounding religious and stop saying, oh, the earth is the Lord's. The moment you say that and you say, and Father, because I am your son and because I am an heir, if the earth belongs to the Lord, it belongs to Alfred too. And the fullness thereof belongs to Alfred too. The people that dwell in it belongs to Alfred too. You begin to realize uh, according to 1 Corinthians uh, he said uh, all things uh, are yours. Uh, you will stand and take responsibility and stand out there and the resources of the earth uh, will be handed to you uh, and in the last days uh, the Bible says uh, the world of the sin uh, they are gathering it up. Uh, they are preparing it up uh, but they don't know what to do with it. Uh, they are about to hand it over to you Charles. Uh, the question is this, are you going to be ready to handle it up and use it for the glory of God? If somebody here ready, clap your hands up and say, Father, I am a son.